interesting topics. And so I would like to share the topics with uh, everybody. And one of them is the high probability order blocks, right? So um, we know order blocks, um, are, they are the babies of ICT. Michael introduced the other blocks and then we've been trading them since, right? But as time goes on, you know, uh, we know what another block is. And then as time goes on, we get to know or have more information about what other blocks are better and what other blocks are not uh, good to trade with. So uh, that one comes with experience. You know, as people begin to trade other blocks, they begin to see certain things, uh, certain uh, specific characteristics about them, right? So that is what makes them uh, bring certain, some of these things out, that this other block is better than this other block. All right, so we go straight into it. Right, so this is a disclaimer. Okay, and then we are going to look at other blocks and then breakout blocks. I won't talk about mitigation block or rejection block. No. All right. So the expectation is at the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify the various blocks that I am talking about. Okay. So you should be able to identify them. You should be able to uh, know which ones are high probability and why they are not high probability. And then you should also be able to trade with them. All right. So now from ICT, we know that an other block is what. Uh, the last bullish or bearish candle that was formed before the change in the uh, market direction. Okay, so the last bearish or bullish candle that uh, preceded a significant move in the opposite direction, right? So we have two other blocks that are the bullish other blocks and the bearish other block. Okay, so smart money traders also call other block a smart money drawdown because uh, the smart money buys or sells into an OB to generate liquidity. And that one, um, in the academy video, I was explaining that. Uh, if you have, I think it is already here. Okay. So smart money drawdown because if you have an uptrend, Assuming you have an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And this is the last higher high that was formed, right? Now, before this high was formed, there was a candle here. That's last bullish candle. This is where the manipulation happened. This is where uh, Smart Money bought. He bought here, okay, to induce people from, for buying. And then it drops. So here, Smart money was buying this move. And at the same time, smart money is selling. So he has, if he has two trade, then the first one, which is a buy, is in a loss, while the sell is in profit. So it will go back to a way to mitigate it. So smart money is in drawdown into this other block. So to mitigate where they close some of their losses, right? They take profit here on the buy. They go back, close the sell, right and we enter some more sales okay so they were buying that buy trade is in loss that sell trade the next sell trade is in profit they take their profits move the price up to close their losses okay so that's the reason why the order block is here that's why you call it uh, smart money drawdown Okay. All right. So, done with that. Okay. So, this is an example of a bullish order block. So, we are seeing that the last cell candle, right, before a significant move. So, sorry, I'm not showing you what is behind here. But this is a significant move, okay? And that's the last bullish candle here. The last uh, bearish candle before that significant move. This is a bullish OB. So when price comes back to it, this is where you want to be a buyer on this candle. 
Okay. So usually from my city, your entry is between the um, open and the midpoint of the cell candle and your stop loss will be what down here, down to this level. Okay. And so this is what a bearish OB. This last buy candle before the significant move. You can see the significant move. Look at the strength at which price move, the sizes of the candles on the downside, right? Three big candles. Okay, so this last candle before this significant move is an OB. And then when price comes back to it, your entry will be at the open of the candle to the middle of the candle, to the midpoint of the candle. Okay. So now we dive into the topic, high probability order blocks. So um, some, yes, I know you might, each and every one of us had once in a while traded an OB that failed. There are reasons why the OB failed. Maybe you were trading the OB against market structure. So when you're looking at OB, you have to look at them in the direction of what the new structure, right? The market structure. So if market structure is the downside, you have to trade the OB on the downside. Okay, so said an OB should have more body than weight. So we are interested in more uh, other blocks that have more body than weight. Okay, so this is the last bullish candle. It has more body than weight. Okay, so, and that the body should be uh, more than 50% of the whole candle, right? So if you combine this week and this week together, the body is more than them. So this is a uh, high probability OB. All right, now we are saying again that if an OB has a longer week, that is an OB that is an indecision candle, right? You have to mark 50% of um, that with the wick. It is usually called a void in the wick. So the OB has more wick. That is an indecision candle, it has a longer wick. So you have to mark 50% of the wick, okay? And then you navigate to the smaller time frame to find out if there's what, an OB or a candle that has more body than wick in uh, that area that you've marked. For instance, in, in this particular example, we have this last candle this last bullish candle before price move. This is what a bullish OB that has more weight than body. It's not like this one, they are not the same. So the difference is that this has this one has a, a longer weight and this one has what more body. So if you, you come across an OB that has more weight than body, then you have to mark 50% of the weight. Okay, so you draw a Fibonacci from here to here, mark the 50% level, okay? So after marking a 50% level, you go to a smaller time frame to find out if this area that you have marked has a candle that matches or this description, more body than work. Okay, so. So let's see, let's look at this particular example. Okay, so this is the same example, right? This, the, the same one we saw. This one, this chart is the same we are seeing here. And this is, uh, I think, a 15 minutes chart. The other one was a four hour chart. So now this is 50% of the, the, the wick, right? The blue line is still, is still there. Okay, so now you can go into a smaller time frame. Since you're in a smaller time frame, you have to look for that candle. And this is the candle. This is what we see there. This particular candle, right? A small body than work. As the last bleach candle before price what drop. So here, this is going to be your entry, right? And your stop loss will be at the top. Okay. All right. So again, we want to uh, look, still looking at the high probability, you want to know how price left the area. So if there's an OB here, how did price leave the area of the OB? Okay, is this strength, right? Usually this, 
we'll be looking at like we'll be looking at volume. Okay, is volume increasing? Okay, volume. If volume is increasing, it shows strength. Okay, so you'll be seeing that volume is increasing here at the strength, and when price is coming back to it, volume will be what? decreasing. It will be dry. Sorry, very dry. Right. Okay, so the speed at which price left the area. Okay, it's a factor to consider when looking for a high probability order block. Okay. Okay, so set uh, it's move uh, the strong move away from the zone. Okay, so this order block push price very uh, strongly away from this particular zone. Right. So when price is coming back there, we know that this is a high probability one. How long did uh, price stay in that area? Did they spend too much time here? If too much time was spent here, then you, uh, you, you should have a second thought, right? But if it left its speed and then it didn't spend too much time here, then it's going to be a high probability one. So small amount of time spent in this area. All right. Is the level fresh? Yes, this level has not been, uh, yet been traded. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, just only other block that has been traded once or have not been tested are the one that can hold, right? You have to consider other factors, but the more, uh, the number of times that other block has been tested, the weaker it becomes. So you should be uh, consider trading other blocks that have, what, um, that are very fresh. Okay, so we are seeing that it's a fresh area. Now, you want to also consider other blocks that have fair value gap below them or above them. And then depending on the kind of uh, other block we are looking at. If you're looking at the bullish order block, you want to see a fair value gap above it. If you're looking at a bearish order block, right? You should look, you should see a fair value gap below it. So for instance, in this case, this is an other block, right? It doesn't, match the description that much more about that rate but this is the last bullish can do in this area and then it has this big void below it right so there's a there's a big void or a fair value gap below it okay so we mark the void this is it now price attempted to what fill the void okay so this in this case price will show the imbalance and then trade into the other block. And then you see a drop. So that is it, All right? Okay, so there may be many reasons why you could have taken a trade from any of uh, any of these particular areas, right? Targeting this fair value gap to be filled. And then there's another reason why you should be taking this trade because there's what a fair value gap below this other block. Right, but that that does not mean that every uh, other block that has a fair value gap will hold. Okay, you also have to consider what the the trend. And if you've watched our videos on market structure, you understand that we trade in accordance to market structure. So, for instance, if you have an uptrend, okay, and then we have a break of structure here, okay. Then if there's a, an order block here, then because you had a break of structure, we'll be looking to trade in this direction, okay? When price breaks this particular low, there'll be some sort of what consolidation or range here. Price will come back into the range, trade into another block break. And this is how you will be trading, you'll be trading the direction of the market. So in this case, in a downtrend, in a downtrend, okay, Bearish order blocks will hold, but bullish order block will fail most of the time. Okay, so for instance, uh, so if you look at this part of the chart, you realize that this bullish order block failed, price traded above it, but this one held because we are in an uptrend. Okay, until here, you broke this particular level. Okay, so in an uptrend, some of the other blocks, the other blocks that are in the direction of the trend will hold, and those that are against the trend will, will, will be broken.
Okay, so now the next thing is to consider when uh, looking for or trying to trade another block is to ask if there is liquidity before the OB. So before price reaches the other block, for instance, this other block, is there a liquidity pool? So this is an example where you see this liquidity pool, this low, right? right above the other block. The question is that why is it that when price came here, it didn't go straight to the other block and then move up and then created this, um, ended into this particular uh, imbalance, right? So this liquidity has been formed right above the other block. So if it is um, the other way around, then you're looking for what? Another block here, okay. This liquidity form, and then price is coming back to the liquidity. The, so the other block is somewhere here above, and price is trading into it. So to clear this stop, take the uh, clear this high, and then trade into the stop and uh, into the other block, and then fall. Okay. So you the question you are asking yourself is that is there liquidity before price reaches the other block? If yes, then it's high probability. But note, it's always supposed to be in the direction of the trend. So for instance, in here, we're in an uptrend. Okay, so price is coming. We want to buy here, then to continue the uptrend. Okay, so now price clears what the liquidity trade into the other block, and then this is the results. Okay. Now, these are some examples. This, this, uh, this one was very uh, recent. I think the date is here is uh, 23rd, I think 23rd of this month, 2021, right? So this is it, this was the setup, okay? Uh, not, so we don't just trade it, this, right? We don't just trade this. We also look at volume, right? So we had, um a volume here uh, the, our volume signal was there okay this tells us that when price comes to not be able to break this particular low and then we had this other block here right and this other block uh is a, a demand candle yes we call we call it a demand candle because of the volume signature right so this area was marked and then you look at the liquidity that has been built above this particular order block. So this tells me that when price take this particular one to trade into the order block here, right? And then we have a move up. And that is what is that that's exactly what happened. It traded into the order block or the demand candle, right? And then went up. Okay. All right. So high probability again was liquidity taken in the zone. So for instance, in this is the same example we saw here. This same example. Okay. But you are looking at the fact that liquidity was taken. Right. So one, let's say price builds up liquidity around this particular area. So we have equal lows. Then we trade below this equal lows, clear them, right? And then we go above it. So in as much as liquidity was taken here, this makes this one an SC candle, okay? A sponsored candle. We look at it an SC again on, on its entirety, but when liquidity is taken, it is an SC, right? So when price is coming back, it will resist, this one will hold because it took liquidity, right? And then we want to move up. Okay, so because liquidity is taken, we consider the order block to be high probability. Okay. So now here we have liquidity pools. You can see the arrows. Liquidity pools being built here. 
price trades above below the liquidity boost, absorb all the liquidity. And then see the move, there was a very a strong move away from this particular area after absorbing all the liquidity, right? So this order block becomes high probability. And again, look at where another thing coming together, this short term low, okay, as liquidity. Now we have liquidity taking and then liquidity before order block, right? Which makes it a high probability. So we are seeing that uh, the market created liquidity in the form of what? Uh, equal lows during a consolidation, okay? Then it absorbed the liquidity uh, with a stop run and left the zone with full speed. So it left it full speed. So when price is coming back here, we know that this is what a high probability uh, trade. Okay. Uh, think I'll look at a breaker too. I'll look at a breaker and then, so we are saying that a breaker is a failed bullish or bearish order block. So a breaker is what? Um, a failed order block. But this particular order block is an order block that has taken liquidity, right? So if it's a failed order block, not just any order block, but an order block that has taken liquidity. So what it means is that if you have an uptrend, okay, you have an uptrend, price traded above this previous um, higher high, okay? And then broke structure, broke the previous lower low, right? Then, you see, normally, what would have expected from an order block was that you have a high, lower high, or higher low, sorry, and a higher high. So when price is coming back, we expect this to hold. Okay, we expect this to hold so that we can move price up, okay? But price broke this particular level. Okay. So when we broke this particular level, oh, this is what uh, a failed demand. In terms of demand and supply, this becomes a failed demand, okay? Which is the same as a breaker that you want to see price going down. All right, right. But usually for me, I consider this whole area to be the breaker this whole move to be the breaker, right? I consider this whole move to be a breaker. And inside this move, there's a way of looking for a trade, right? To reduce what your, your risks. There's a way of looking for it. But for now, this is what a breaker is. This is the breaker. Okay, so Want to see price straight into the breaker and then we drop this an example okay so price straight above the previous high this is the other block that we expect to hold price trades below the other block the other block couldn't hold and then it comes back to that other block and then drops so this is an example of a breaker Okay, so to trade a breaker, your entry is what? Um, at the close of the uh, order block, of, of the field order block and your stop loss is above it. Okay, so the same scenario here. Okay, so you have lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then price trade below the previous lower low. We expect this other block to hold for a continuation. The other block fails, right, fails, and then price comes back to the breaker. All right, so in this particular breaker, look at the, the range of the breaker. So when there's a breaker like this and price fails to break the high of the breaker on the first attempt, it gives us a pullback. This is this is the candle you consider instead of the breaker, right? Because this one couldn't break this particular one before coming back. Okay, so this is your, your entry technique, but you can still use the breaker. Okay, so I think uh, for now that will be all.
that'll be all. Um, I'll stop recording and then you ask question. And then if uh, at the, the, the time is up, you rejoin with the same link and then we ask the questions. All right. Hello, Alex. Yeah.